I wanted to spend a couple of moments with you discussing some aspects related to lesson one. First, types of communication. This is really important to understand that there are many different types of communication. Because communication is extremely complex and ever changing. So starting with types, we have the first type of communication, which is intrapersonal communication. This starts within the self. So right now I have what we call mental noise, little mental dialogue. Um, sometimes I get caught talking to myself as it relates to things I'm working out mentally. That's what we call intrapersonal communication. And then we have interpersonal communication. That's the second type of communication. Interpersonal communication is dyadic, which means that it involves at least one other person and you. This is the most common type of communication. Interpersonal communication is what you're going to be focusing on when you're creating your, inter, your communication model assignment. Your model will consist of you and a conversation you're having with another person. An example of interpersonal communication could be when I am ordering with my server. That is an interpersonal interaction. It's between me and the server. Interpersonal communication can be small in small increments at small amounts of time, or it can be in larger increments with consisting of larger amounts of time. It could be between you and your child or you and your partner, significant other, the person that you're communicating with at work. That's interpersonal communication. Another type of communication is small group communication. This can be between a family, an athletic team, a group of coworkers within a specific section of the organization, working in student groups. The majority can influence the minority within the group to also conform to specific decision making. And when you're working in small groups, you're attempting to accomplish a rather large goal collectively versus by yourself. When you think of small groups, um, you might be attempting to solve a problem. And that could be a problem related to things that are happening within the family dynamic. Or it could be a project that you're working on at work. So that's small group communication. That's another type of communication, if you will. We also have organizational communication. This um, consists of communication being communicated from the top down or from the bottom up. You can also have what's called lateral communication happening within the department. You are working together towards a common goal. This could be commercial related, nonprofit related, politically related, health related, or even for recreational reasons. You're working together collectively as a group. You also have public speaking as a type of communication. This is where the small group becomes so large th that not all of the members can contribute together. One person will be doing the speaking, relating it or relaying a message to the large group as a whole. Public communication is I think the most difficult, some of you made mention of this in your introductory videos, learning how to uh, publicly speak or put together a speech and deliver a speech. And you will have an opportunity to deliver public communication as a type of communication towards the end of the semester. This is where you will be doing the talking and we will be doing the listening. And then lastly, we have mass communication. And this is where messages are so large that they are being transmitted to a wide variety of people in many different areas. You can do this um, electronically, such as news broadcasters delivering daily or nightly news. You could also do this in print format. So newspapers, magazines, um, 
you can do this with social media, communicate messages to the masses, um, whether that be through Twitter, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, but that's another type of communication that's going out to the masses. So we talked about different types of communication. We had intra, starting with the self, inter, communicating with one other person. You had small group, organizational, public, and mass communication. So those are the different types of communication. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the components that make up communication. Once you've identified the type, next come the components. So when you think of components, I want you to think of them as elements, if you will, that make up communication. So if communication starts with the self, we have what's called a sender, somebody who's sending those messages. You might be the sender of that message. You're creating and articulating a communication message that you want to send out to another person, a small group of people, or even a large group of people, or mass to several large groups of people. We also have the element which is the receiver of communication. The receiver is the one person that's getting the message that's being sent out. We also have what's called encoding the message and that typically happens you when you are the sender. You're trying to think of the message that you want to send out and then you're sending that message out. So you're, um, think about it like a computer or text messaging. You are the person that's formulating the message to send it out, but you have to first process through what you want to send and how you want to send it. So that is encoding. And then the receiver decodes the message. So they're trying to understand by inputting that message, what is it that you're trying to say? Um, and that's where the message comes into play. So you're formulating how you want to structure and organize, then you are sending what you uh, attempted to structure and organize all through a message, which is how you communicate what it is that you're communicating to the person that you're communicating or group of people that you're communicating to. And then we have the channel of communication. This is really important. The channel is how you're sending that message out. Right now, my channel of communication is the webcam and the computer. And then I upload all of this information to YouTube, which is just another channel to put my message together. And then you press on that link and you press play and the channel then becomes your computer, your uh, YouTube account displaying that message. So the channel can be, in this case, through computer mediated means, or you can also send through face to face. If you were, uh, were literally in front of one another right now, that would be face to face communication. So the channel is the method at which we send out the message that we're sending. And then of course we have feedback. Feedback typically will happen um, when we're face to face, that those nonverbal cues, electronically or through computer mediated means, the feedback is a little bit different. The feedback uh, will typically be that link that you press on. And then if you have any questions for me, the means in which you send that message. Sometimes that'll be via email or a telephone call, or you might come and see me in my office. Um, and that you're gonna be providing me with feedback based upon the message that I send out. And then the last, well not the last element, the second to the last element is the noise. So right now I want you to listen to what's going on around you. What do you hear? Are there kids in the background playing? Do you hear noise from the monitor or the tower like I do? Uh, that's what we call external noise. And that can really affect the messages that we're sending and receiving. But we also have something called internal noise. Like right now for me, it's five o'clock at night. I've had a really long day. I'm, 
I'm processing through what I have coming up next. And that's all happening inside. Or if you're hungry right now, that is what we call internal noise or psychological noise. If you have a headache, that's internal noise or psychological noise. And then lastly is the environment. This is what you are surrounded by because that's going to affect your communication. Right now I'm sitting in my office creating this video for you to talk about the components of communication. But you might be sitting at home listening to this. So the environment is your home essentially. Um, if you were out on a walk or at a park, let's say, with somebody and you're having a conversation with them, the environment will be the park. The environment plays a crucial role in how we communicate because how we communicate at the park is going to be different than how we would be communicating, say, at work or at school or at home even. So the environment is where the communication is taking place. Right now I'm in my office and you might be at home or someplace else, right? But that's the environment, which is the component of communication. Now, these components are elements, if you will. They're all fine and good, but how do they work to show how communication is taking place? Well, we have a couple of different ways by creating models. The first model that we have is a linear model. If we look at this model here, what's wrong with it? Well, let me tell you, everything is going in one direction. And if communication is an exchange that is happening, this really doesn't show those elements interacting with one another. I mean, the elements are there, but communication is dynamic, folks, and it's ever-changing. So we want a model that shows that. And we have the transactional model. The transactional model shows both of us sending and receiving messages, encoding and decoding those messages, having noises happening along with multiple channels of communication. So it shows these elements working together. And this is important because this is what you're going to be producing with your communication model assignment. You are going to be showing me a transactional model between you and one other person. So that's just a little bit of information I wanted to share with you. You're going to be covering a lot more information as it relates to Chapter 1, but I think this will give you a good start. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. You can email, call, or stop by. Keep up the good work, scholars.